Hello everyone and welcome back to another one of my videos. On today's video we're going to talk about how to improve your line quality. So you're doing your side views and your front three quarters but there's still something that looks a little bit off. I'm going to help you by improving your lines. Also at the end of this video I have an announcement to make so please stick around till the end. So today we're here at Autodinamica and today we're going to talk about how the lines should have a little bit of tension on them. If you're going to do your sketches and all your lines are like perfectly even perfect arches, kind of like a Volkswagen Beetle, which it makes it work on that car. But for most cars, if you want to create some beautiful sketches, you cannot have the line have the perfect same radius the entire time. So you have to play with that. Your lines have to have tension. So now let's go into paper and understand what I'm talking about with the line and line tension. So now we're on paper and we're going to talk about the different types of curves. You have curves that I just call them lines without tension. And what that is, is that the curve just follows the same path the entire way. It doesn't, it's almost like parts of a circle. Like if you just continue, you'll probably end up on doing a perfect round circle. Now, if we have lines with tension, what that, that does is that it's a line that starts with a tighter curvature and then it straightens out or it's the other way around it starts a little flat and then it tightens and that gives you a lot more dynamic so i call this you can start it fast and then slow it down or you can slow it down and then go fast so this will give your sketches a lot more dynamic and um, it will give them some speed as well so as a designer i always say challenge and don't just accept things that they tell you. You can make something work with just perfect arches. If you see the Volkswagen Beetle, that's pretty much the theme of the car. Everything is just like perfect curves that have like no tension to them. All of them just, you can almost complete circles out of them. But now if you try that with a sports car and you go with all these like fluffy curves, I mean, this sketch might look right to you, but if you compare it to a sketch that is done with a little bit of line tension, you will see how the sketch will look a lot more aggressive so make sure you change those lines we're gonna do a very basic design but if you see those lines have a little bit of tension to them they don't follow a continuous curvature and they go fast and slow and slow and fast and it just gives you something that looks like it goes fast without even moving so here's a comparison i'm gonna do the same design that is on the top but now I'm going to do it on the bottom using that philosophy of putting some tension to the lines. So wheelbase is the same, is same proportions, but I'm just changing the shape of those lines. Look at the difference. This car is so cute. This one just looks cool. So here's a comparison of how the bottom car will look against the top car. And you can see how I'm cutting the lines and just speeding them up and just taking out of that all that fluffiness. So when you're doing your sketches, you freehand them and then after you go and clean them up, just the same way I taught you how to use this, the circle guides and the ellipse guides, there's a thing called a French curve. A French curve, or some people call them uh, Bezier curves, I believe. This is a French curve and the way this works, it's like you rotate it around and you pretty much will find any curve that you need. And you see how the radius is not constant, but it, it tightens and loosens. This one came with uh, three sets. When I'm sketching cars, I usually need these long, nice curves. But when I'm going more into the smaller details and stuff, you can always find like a wheel arch or like you will have to rotate them around to find the different curves that you need. So this, these guys are called French curves. I'm going to put the link below where you can buy them. I bought mine on Amazon, but I'm pretty sure if you don't have Amazon or access to it, go to your local art store. Again, these ones are hard to find at like regular store, star grid, supermarket, but if you go to an art store, I'm pretty sure you can find them. French curves, Bezier curves. If you click the link below, you can order them straight from Amazon because Amazon recognizes that link as a post from me. So that way I can keep growing my channel and keep doing this tutorial videos. I hope this helps you understand better your lines. And now let's go see some real life examples so you can compare it to from paper to the actual car. I mean, look at this thing, it's just gorgeous. The Jaguar E-Type, it's a beautiful, beautiful car. Look at that long front hood. The engine is sitting at the front, kind of like I showed you guys before. The cabin sits all the way back, and this classic car doesn't follow the rule that I told you where the, the windshield is pointed towards the front tire because the cabin is shifted so far back that it just has like the very unique proportion that is just absolutely beautiful. So this is a pretty good example of how to 
play with your lines and not keep them the same curvature. You see how the line starts kind of like with a tight curve and then it smooths out and then same here. You have like that curve that goes tight and then it opens up. So that way, um, <laughs> I almost went backwards. So that way you create some tension, some dynamic to your lines. Same thing with the hood line. Look how flat it is at first and then it curves down. So you have to make sure that your lines are never just perfectly even. You have to make sure that they have some tension to them. Okay, so same thing here with the Mustang GT. You can see the same example with the lines. You see the rear fender, how it just has those hips that give it some muscle. But if you check that line, it's not a perfect constant line. It has some tension. It's kind of tight at the top and then it goes smooth fast. That's why they call them a fastback. Either you have curves that go and turn and you have straight lines to help so the car doesn't look all wobbly. Well, that's it for today with the line drawings. I hope you understand how the tension of the curves can make your sketch look a lot more dynamic. We're lucky to have these wonderful cars around us. This is just with my markers. I don't own any of these cars. I don't have that car at home, but just following my markers and sketching, go out there, sketch cars, talk to people. Even if you can't afford one of these cars, you can have access for them. It's, it's an art and people love them, so they like to showcase them. If you can sketch it for them, you can get access to some really cool cars. Thanks to all of you that stuck around till the end. So the announcement is that now I'm gonna do these videos every Friday, so every single Friday is gonna come out. I've been all over the place, but I realized that it's better for you and for me if we just stick to a calendar. Also, I'm gonna do a new video series, which is gonna be super cool, and it's gonna be every Wednesday. It's gonna be a shorter version. It's not gonna be a tutorial, but it's gonna be more related about design. Everything that I've learned about being a designer. All the hard knocks and everything that I learned along the way. So thank you again for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's very important so that way you get noticed when my videos come out. Also hit that bell so you get that notification on your phone. Thank you for watching. See you next Wednesday. So you make sure you tune in on Wednesday so you can see our new video series.